Now let's take some more time to look at how to use images as a background for your curve editor. And we'll do this by going to the display tab in the edit curve window. So we have all of our control points set and you'll notice that we have this pentagon flash, um, you know, five pointed star matted up in the background. And we've got all of our control points already set. So you can see we've got to have these corner points here. Everything's already been laid out for you for this demonstration. In the display tab, we can browse for this uh, cross section type here. It's just this Pentagon and star PNG, except that places it here in the background. And we can turn the grid on or off. We can look at this, but we have these other options here. Now, preserve aspect is going to assume that the image that you have in the background has the same scale in the vertical and horizontal direction, so the width and height scale. If we deactivate that, we can stretch this image if we want to. And that's useful when you know that the physical dimension of what's drawn in, uh, say, a, a sectional drawing, the listed dimension is different than what it physically looks like on the screen. We talked a bit about this when we were doing the basic modeling practices. So for now, let's just leave preserve aspect on. We can adjust the scale of this background image using this slider here. And notice that our control points and our coordinates are all staying fixed. This is just scaling the image in the background. And so what I'm shooting for here is to try and get these points at minus 0.5 and 0.5 in X and Y. If that's not quite what we want, you can see we're a little bit low here in, um, in Y, we could go up. We could actually scale this a little bit if we wanted to. But really, the centroid of this is kind of in the wrong spot. It should be kind of down here somewhere. So I can give it some Y offset and adjust that a little bit higher if I want to. But right now, let's set this back and look a little bit more as to what's going on. Now, notice that when we're drawing these cross sections, what we're actually doing is, just like with the progression of a fuselage or a stack, the right side of the part over here on this side is where U or rather W0 lies and then you go around the part. So if we come to a rear view, you can see that this control point corresponds here. So I can kind of drag this away. You can see that it moves. If on the other hand, you have a view from a different perspective and you need to flip it, all you have to do is click this button. Now this is a symmetric image, so it doesn't really matter but you can flip the image and what that's going to do is reverse this and it's going to make this side correspond to this component or this piece of the model. Okay. Now, finally, one thing that you may notice is that as we come in and we zoom our plot here, we might lose track of our alignment with our curve. And so that might not be at all what we want it to happen. We have to go through and play with it and adjust the scale and the zoom and everything else. If we reset our zoom and pan, back to where everything is lined up nicely. Now we can click lock image. And this is a great little feature that lets you zoom in. And what it does is it simultaneously scales the curve, the grid, and the background image at the same time so that you can get in really close here and start to drag these where they need to be. So you'll notice that these tiny little adjustments can be made. And in fact, let's make this a red background so we can see what the heck we're doing. We can point these right at the neck of these corners and more accurately represent where these points should go. So you're going to be able to zoom in and get really close to these points and manipulate both the background image and the curve at the same time so that they stay aligned. You don't have to worry about your scale or your offsets getting screwed up just because you wanted to go and look at a specific point. So that's how you can go in and use an image as a background for your curve editor. It's a very useful, very powerful tool. I recommend that you play around with it, find some settings that work for you, and uh, by all means, um, get to know this very useful feature of OpenVSP.